The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 o'clock till noon, except on Monday, I had the privilege of uh, sitting in for ailing uh, Larry Pesavento. I know that he'll be back pretty soon because I know that he was able to uh, give us some really terrific charts into the den uh, today, but he's lost his voice. So as soon as his voice is back, he will be right here. So I'm going to be doing today's show uh, uh, the 11 o'clock till 12, Tiger Technicians Hour, then the 12 o'clock Eastern Time to one Larry Pesavento's uh, Trading What You See. So uh, let's go straight to it. We've got a couple of hours here, a lot of time, We've got callers waiting in line already. But this is the most important thing. I am looking, and this is what my subscribers get every single day. I show this Dow chart. And I notate it with the Chapman wave. With there, there is only one, uh, there are two moving averages. One you can't see because it's absolutely irrelevant at this particular time. That's the 200 EMA. The other is the nine period that red one. If you're looking at Tiger TV, now what's really important as far as I am concerned. Oops, I'm just leaning over. As far as I'm concerned, what's really important about the pattern that we're looking at. The subscribers knew, in fact, I even had an email today and a comment uh, from one of my subscribers, at least a couple of my subscribers, saying it's just remarkable how these patterns repeat over and over and over again. So oh, before I do that, let me just run all the numbers down. The Dow is down 47 at 12,231. It was actually down earlier at the 12,192 level. It's bounced back. I say bounce back because this resistance area, and I'll explain what I'm looking at, is really strong. Um, it's a triple, it's in fact a triple resistance area in the Dow. Uh, and the Dow was in fact the stronger of all the indices um, over the last couple of days. The S&P is down 675 at 1394. The comp index is down 10 at 30.40. Hey, not bad. Considering you've an Apple, you've got a bunch of stocks that, that have been very weak. So let's see how they're doing today. We will look at that. We've got gold down 10 at 1652. And the, S the uh, silver is down 40 cents at 30.53. Platinum is down 8.72 at 1562. And now you've got copper finally. Plop. Down 6.85 at 3.77. Crude oil is down 77 cents at 105.40. And bonds are up 20 second, 27 30 seconds at 142.30. Let me now go through one step at a time just real quickly. And then I want to take out calls. I want, don't want them to wait too long. The Dow made this the top on the 16th of March at 13,289. I drew at the ellipse. I drew the side part of the cup going all the way down to 12,710 on the 10th of April on 10th of April you did have a nominal new high at peak e which gave me that double top you know the drop bucket pattern in my introducing the chap wave methodology there's a chapter that I call uh, the drop bucket or the double top formation it's chapter 2 slide 346 out of 470 so here it is and what does it say? It says there's a particular pattern that you can look for, and when it makes that double top, watch out because you could pull back very sharply. It's exactly what you did. You pull back from 13,000 to 97, a close below the 13,289 previous high, and then you plunge down to that 600 points down to the low of 12,710. 50, 16 sessions to the downside. And we were looking at 15 sessions to 16 sessions on the upside to break to a new high, a recovery high. There it is. Now, what else, uh, what else was most important? We went peak A at 12,986, peak B at 13,131, peak C at 13,262, and yesterday we spiked to a high of, why did I not write that in, 13,338, 13,338, you won't see it because it's yellow. Now I'm going to make it darker color so you can see it. There it is. So now you've had your three rallies to the top. There's a chart formation that I've been working on for a long time. It is the handle and cup. 
You know, you get the cup and handle. No one ever talks about the pattern that's the exact opposite, where you make a cup formation, and then you make this very deep cup, cup type formation going back to the previous top. What happens in those circumstances? I like to look at chart patterns and see how many times in the history of my looking at, at charts does it happen. Sometimes I write them down, sometimes I just keep it stored up in my mind. I have, I wouldn't say, you know, like some people have perfect pitch. I, I wouldn't say I've got a perfect eye for, for chart formations, but I don't normally forget a chart formation. I might forget which stock has it, but the pattern is just indelible in my mind. So this says when you get back for the third time to that particular level, previous high, between the 13,280s to 13,290s, even though you spiked higher, it is that pattern that I call the dreaded H upside down. It is imperative that it closes nicely above the previous important high of, in this case, 13,297. Even though it's gotten there in one day early, that's very good. So I'm going to go through that. I'm going to talk about the parameters. I want to go to our first caller, Ken in Iowa. Hi, Ken. How are you? Ken, you there? <clears throat> I'm sure. Hi, Ken. Okay, Ken, I'm going to look at your stock because you want to look at CHK. Just yell, I'm here anytime while I'm speaking, just so that I know you're there. Normally, I don't take your calls in the first uh, the first segment of the show. I want to do it today because there is so much to go on. Remember, I spoke about the Euro, the USD, U, EUR, USD, the a euro dollar currency pair making leg D. I suspect that there could be a peak D. I spoke about the dollar going straight towards the 200 period exponential moving average. Hit it exactly yesterday, down strongly. So this is a very important session. So let me do this. Um, I all right. You want to look at CHK? I'll just ask once again. Ken, are you there? All right. Well, CHK is uh, just give a yell if you're there. Is uh, Chesapeake? Uh, Chesapeake, Chesapeake Energy. Now, this is a very interesting stock. There have been these stories going around, but the moment I heard that there was some hanky-panky going on with the uh, CEO, I said to myself, this stock, which is, which made a peak D in the Chapman Wave of 35.95, and then made in the month, monthly chart, and then the very next bar had two was two cents lower. Now, you know, I told you I've been working on these chart formations. And the chart formations say that in the monthly chart, although now I'm starting to do them in the weeklies and even the dailies, when you make two consecutive parallel bars that have not fractionally higher, but fractionally lower highs, the high of the second bar is just fraction. I do mean fractionally less than a point. Actually, I, I mean... I prefer cents, or if it's a $350 stock, like a dollar ten or something like that. I've got a whole slew of these things. When they make that pattern, especially if you've got a um, you've got a divergence as you have here, when the high of February of 2011 at 35.95 was made, it pulled back. Uh, the very next bar was 35. 93, then it pulled back to, what was it, tw uh, 27, 28 in June, ran all the way back, but it only got to 35, 75, and then that's that's a right arm failure, it's a right shoulder failure in the Chapman wave, that's the pattern that we look at here, this is it, a right shoulder, a right arm extension, mm, where is the right, there, right shoulder failure, this is the one that explains the right shoulder failure, there it is, right there. That's the same pattern. You look for that pattern, uh, that can really uh, uh, make a difference in your visualization of chart formations. It failed there and then it plunged. That plunge said it went right through the 200 period moving average in the monthly. Didn't even get there in the weekly on the rebound, but most importantly, look at this, the nine period exponential moving average in this failure, that double top failure pattern. Um, in, on the 20th of March of this year, 25, 2609, that 9-period moving average, not once until it tried to bounce, and it, for, for a moment, on the 30th, it went to 18.49. Now it's plunging, and it's about to make a lower low. 1678 was the low of the 27th of April. 
and today's low is 1682. I suspect it's going to test that. I would not touch the stock. First of all, there's an iron gap to the downside. Second of all, you can see the weekly chart. It's just flattening out. It's 7% in the stochastic. I don't like it. I would not be touching it. I don't think this is anything you want to be part of. Let them resolve these problems. There's a whole finagling going on. <clears throat> and even if it's not finagling, it's just questionable practice. Don't touch it. In fact, the way it's looking right now, this thing could plunge. It could even go down to the low of. If it takes out, if it closes under 16.92 to 16.70, if it closes under 16.50 in May, this thing could go down to $9.84, the low of 2009 of December of 2008. I'd be very careful. Where, why would I be wrong? I'd be wrong if in the next few days it manages a bounce into the 19 area, into the gap, treats it as support, and then over the next 10 sessions is able to get to 21. Then I'll say, okay, they've resolved something. I'd still be very careful. So if you're in it, I'd be getting out. If you're thinking of a trade, don't touch it. This is bad news. Let's go to Kirk in Columbus. Hi, Kirk. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to take a look at E G L E. Okay, Eagle something or other. Let's see, Eagle, Eagle, um, Eagle Bulk Shipping Inc. Um, yeah. Do you have any position at all in this? Uh, not yet. Okay, I'm going to recommend that you just stay away for 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 the moment. I think as a trade for a percentage bounce, because that's its history is it likes to bounce. I would, I'd be very careful. Folks, we're looking at EGLE. It's trading at a dollar thirty-eight. It's down eleven cents. I'm get, there's a there's a particular pattern here that if you can identify these patterns, it's just real simple. I'm just drawing it in right now. This has a characteristic of going from a, a very important trough, a low bar that is. It goes to a peak C, and then fails at peak C and goes to peak C minus, and it's done at one. Two, this is the third time, but the difference is, let me open this up much wider. Oh, that wasn't a C minus, that was a G. All right, sorry, I, should, I always have to go back. G slash C minus, there you are, that clears it up. So that says to me that this, when a stock goes to a C minus and fails, that's really negative. And this is negative because it's going to test the low of the... 6th of March at 1.36, today's low is 1.38. Now I'll explain what I'm looking at. There was a particular chart pattern that I drew into this called the Chapman Waves Flat Base Restart. I don't want to go into that, it's a little technical, but it says when this thing comes back, it should come back and retest the starting point, and that's at 1.29. Okay. So until it gets to between 1.33 and 1.27, I wouldn't touch it. And also in this environment, I'd be a little bit careful. You know what, today's, where's it? Call me Friday or Monday. Let's look at it again and see if it's trying to stabilize in that 1.29 area. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. 
Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician. So, hey, just a couple of things here. 1519 on this day, in 1519, Leonardo da Vinci died in France at the age of 67. But this is what I thought was fascinating. In 1936, Peter and the Wolf, a symphonic tale for children by Sergei Prokofiev, had his world premiere in Moscow. So there's, it's a fantastic piece for, for little ones, actually for, for anyone. It's uh, Prokofiev, Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, fabulous orchestration, teaching all about the orchestra, as well as uh, a narration that's really quite fascinating. <clears throat> Excuse me. But more importantly, to go with that, there's an uh, English composer called Benjamin Britten, and his Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra is just fantastic. Themes on Purcell, one of uh, famous composer back in the Renaissance, uh, Baroque period. Uh, no, Renaissance period. So uh, that's called Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. So I just thought I'd mention that. All right, let's get back to the market. Now, what's really important as far as I'm concerned is the double top in the, in the Dow... I-N-D-U, how it's either going to be repelled and it closes underneath 13,000, uh, let's be safe, let's call it 13,050 to 13,000 by Friday or Monday. That will say, ah, certainly got a short-term sell, uh, sell signal in place in the daily chart. Weekly chart has squeaked to a peak to a leg E. The MACD is flat so that says it keeps the last uh, indication in place, which is still in a <clears throat> in a buy mode, and the stochastics way down seventy three percent. So that's your sandwich because the daily is looking very good in the Dow, monthly is looking very very good <clears throat> in leg E, and E has extended into May, not with the S and P but with the Dow. That is very important because it means you can't get a peak E for an entire 
two months. That means all the way into June, on the last day of June, that's when you can say, we now have a peak E in place, because even up until the last day, you could make an extension to this leg by going over 13,338. Uh, 13, Let me just change that. Okay, so that's the monthly chart if you're looking at Tiger TV. Now, what's even more suggestive as to the uh, into, as, as to chart patterns, I showed subscribers this morning April, how April closed out in the up channels. The Dow remains in this beautiful up channel. So, so far, I don't even want to mess with that, right? Now, this pattern that I talk about just pertains to the Chapman Wave technique. It's where you get a very strong leg to the upside, and then you get this oval body. When you break out above the, the arch, that, that the high of the oval, which in this case is 13,297, that starts the neck of, the, of a, what looks like a stalk leg. Oh, you need a little imagination. He has the leg, he has the body, that long body, that wide body, and then you get the neck. The neck can be short, or the neck can be very long. If it's long, it becomes like a propeller shaft with a one-to-one -one extension to the upside. I don't even want to talk about it right now. We're in the middle of the week. We're not even the middle of the week yet, getting towards the middle of the week. So let's wait until Friday comes along and see where it's going to close. But on the daily chart, looking with, at the chart that I show, showed subscribers yesterday with the three time frames, the daily, weekly, monthly, what we've got is the stochastics at 89%. That is really good. And that also means you've got the chance to break above the 13,338 high of yesterday within a couple of days, as long as 13,150, the nine period exponential moving average, is not broken to the downside, because that will start to impact the stochastic. But at 89%, I suspect the Dow would have to go under 13,000. 130, certainly under 13,050 to really get it back down again, uh, below 81, 80, 80%, percent, maybe into the 70s. So, so far, all I can say is I'm not prepared to go wildly to the short side. I believe there are lots of stocks that are looking like great shorts. I'm going to discuss some of them right now. And there are some stocks that are acting, still acting really well. Now, I was asked in the den, uh, G7 asked, what about the, the trainees? The transports, now this is fascinating because the transports are just in the sideways. If you look at the weekly chart, you've made a dub, two W formations. Uh, now, we have a little nickname for those. This is called them U patterns, a double U pattern. And that says that the resistance in the IYT, the Dow, the, the iShares U.S. Transportation Index, the, the, the resistance in the area of 95.64 to 96.25 is very strong. To pierce it, you need higher highs and higher lows. Ha! That's interesting. We'll talk about that as soon as I get back. 877-927-6648. Love to get your calls internationally. 727-445-1044. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on grows. If you're committed to becoming an extraordinary trader and investor, then make mastery your outcome. Yes, my best student, Steve Rhodes, became my best teacher. But even more important is what he's taught me, and the time is now for you to take advantage of his knowledge. Thanks, Tom. I've learned that it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. I want to teach you the consistency that exists in the stock, futures, forex, and commodity markets day in, day out. For one solid day, Friday, May 18th, I'm going to conduct an online master trader course that will teach you how to buy and sell the D-point. This one pattern alone with the single best entry and exit techniques, when combined with my money management strategies, will create extraordinary rewards for you and your family. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you'd like and it will teach you to become a master. All the details are on the homepage at TFNN.com. Sign up today because mastery is one click away. It's your decisions, not your conditions that determine your destiny. Wow! Go get them, folks! 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. Has the car Current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. You know, I've, I've been calling this a rotational correction, a market that is going to correct, but rotationally. That means that there are stocks that can hold the market up, each index, while other stocks are dragging it down with the weight of evidence saying that there's going to be greater upside potential than downside potential, but within a certain trading range. I'd also say that the VIX index to me is, is just key. It is absolutely key. That, I've followed it for, what, I don't know, as, as long as I can remember, maybe 18 years, 120 years. I don't know how long the VIX has been around. But it seems to me that the volatility index, um, I'd say if the volatility index goes over 18.20, that's that would probably pull the market down. I, I got the a short term bounce signal in the dollar, short term uh, uh, pullback in the euro, but that to me is not important. It is the intensity of the buying, and until the market proves me wrong, I have to believe that that is really a core ingredient of this market, and that's the reason why I only wanted to nibble at a an index short today. We got the QID. I think it was a 30, uh, 30 .99. Yeah, 30.99. I gave it less than a 1% risk. Why? Because my thinking was if it was going to work, there shouldn't even be a bounce. It should just continue from the moment we got it rising. That's 200% short the Qs. Rising. And if it even bounced, it would say that rotation is still working. There are enough, uh, enough um, NASDAQ stocks 
to influence the upside or at least to curtail the downside. Not only that, when I get a major sell signal, it very invariably comes because I've got the peak D but or E or F or whatever it is in the in the Dow and all of a sudden you get for no reason there's no real trigger at all. This you get a triple digit down and then it's followed by another triple digit down to the and that that two powerfully strong down days is really what tells me which is what we haven't had for a long time the intensity of the selling, whether it's just going to be a pullback, a little breather, or whether we're really going to go down. So if this Dow, if the Dow closes under 13,000, being the stronger of the indices, and let me just show you something here. There's always a question. People say, why Why do you always use the Dow? I mean, come on in. Most people look at the S&P. It's just, that's what is that's what always, always mentioned, the Dow. And I've looked at the Dow. If I've given a call on the Dow for the last... 20 years or something, every single day, I follow the Dow all the time. But look, here it is. Look, tell me what the difference is between these ind indices. This is the Dow. This is the S&P. This is the NDX. Except in the percentage that the NDX went up higher than the Dow, they look the same. So wherever the Dow is going to go, good chance that the others are going to go that way as well. Now, in 2000, the Dow topped out in January. I think it was the 14th. Hey, you had to wait until March before the index and the S&P topped out. That, that was unusual. So, and they almost always, they almost always give some kind of a low together, but the low can be tested as in October of 2002, and then in 2003, not all the indexes came back to that low of, two, of October 2003. For instance, the semiconductors held higher. Now, what are we looking at here? Is let me get rid of this. I want to get rid of that. And let's go to what I was looking at. The short term said the 120 minute chart made a peak F top and could pull back. That's exactly what's happened. Unless it cracks and closes underneath the low of 13,212, that was the low of the uh, first of, uh, that was yesterday's low. If it does, then you're going to look at the 200 period exponential moving average of 13,053 as a potential. Uh, downside target. But if this volatility index, which is making a peak D as we speak in the 120 minute chart, closes today under 17, <clears throat> that's going to help the market. The, the short term trading index giving me no signals whatsoever. And here you've got an up channel in the, in the, the if you're looking at Tiger TV, you've got the daily in an up channel, peak D, <clears throat> repelled somewhat from the previous highs. And you've got the S&P, which didn't go to the 416, 1416, oh, sorry, 1422, I meant to write that in, 1422, let me just type that in, I, I, I remembered it last night, then forgot to change it, 1422 is high, now it's going to be tough for the S&P to actually get to the 1422s unless there's some really good action intraday and we close. Hey, if we close up 35 points in the Dow, S&P comes back to minus 1 or plus 1 or plus 2, and the Comp Index comes back, that's really good action. So the, the S&P yesterday made a high of 14.15.30, 14.15.32. It needs to power higher. So we're done with these charts. Now let's go to this. The utilities. There's a chart of formation that I talked about. Uh, I mentioned it on Monday. I'll talk about it again. <clears throat> I call it it's like a worm or a snail that just keeps claw cl crawling up the tree branch. You remember you're looking at the exact opposite a few moments ago when I looked at um, uh, when I looked at when Kirk called from Columbus about Eagle, E G L E. Remember that was a repellent line. Uh, wait, where is it? Uh, in the in the in the monthly chart, that's the repellent line. It's it's this is the um, this is the caboose. This is when you are no. This is the uh, gondola. This is the gondola effect when it treats that line as a resistance line and it keeps hanging from that. So you've got the exact opposite now in the XLU, which is in leg. In the in the daily, it's in leg. Peak C, if it doesn't make a new high today, we should go to peak D. But more importantly, the previous peak D in the weekly is trading at 35.65 down 19 cents of 36.27 back in December. That cup formation or rectangle formation looks like it really wants to try to get back there. Now, the, the monthly chart that I was talking about just now, now this I'm going to talk about it and... What I had mentioned, someone had asked me about it back in uh, May of 2011. Oh, my goodness, that's exactly a year ago. 
almost almost exactly a year ago. And I said, it's at 33, ho-hum, just strolling along the 9 EMA promenade in leg D. The technicals are confirming. Isn't that something? And look where we are right now, strolling along the nine period exponential moving average. If the X, the XLU closes underneath, the support is 34.93 in the monthly chart. Any month that it closes underneath, if it gets closes at about 34.57, that'll say, be careful, it could start to become uh, some kind of a resistance area rather than support. So far, acting quite well. <clears throat> now there's another stock. Um, AGN. This has just been on an incredible tear. It is down 3.81. Ah, big deal, 3.81. It was up in the 97 area, 97.09, just four sessions ago. But wait a minute. Remember when I was talking about this pattern, this, this worm crawl, this snail crawl up the 9 EMA? Well, this month of May could be the first time that it closes under that if... AGM, which has just been unbelievable from the low of 28.95 in November of 2008, it is not once, no, it did, once, in, it broke above the 9 EMA in March of 2009, and then just once in May of 2009, three years ago, it closed underneath, but it hated that, and it went right above that again. Oh, look, I didn't see that. Look, another little mini close in June of 2010. Every year it tries that. Then it tried it again in um, August of 2011, but it couldn't stay below. It closed right at the high of the month. So this is going to be very interesting because Allergan, where they make, what do they make, medical instruments or something? I can't remember. Uh-oh. Should I take a chance? Oh, I'll take a chance. Allergan... A L L Er Gan Inc. I think it's medical instruments. Um multi specialty healthcare company focused on discovering, developing, commercial innovative pharmaceutical biologics and okay. So that's its area. Well you know what? It's uh, contact solutions, Botox, everything. Okay, good. Well it's had a spectacular run. I have no signal yet in the monthly. Monthly's just begun. It looks like I could get one. And remember I spoke about those two high bars? Look at this. 96.39 in March, 97.09 in April, and so far the high is 96.69. That is 10 cents away from the previous high. I'm going to be watching this. We'll all watch this. Because if it starts to pull back, makes a peak F this month. I've actually put the down arrow in. I don't know how it's going to climb above the previous high. So I've got the arrow in. I'm premature. But I like to, sometimes I like to be ahead of the game. The stochastic's turning down, but it's still at 88%. A lot of work has to be done in the weekly. It's going to take time. But this, whatever the earnings were, was, if that's what it was earnings, that, that wasn't good. And it made a double top. And I'm looking at this failure in the stochastic and the MACD. If it closes under today's low of 90.66 at any time in the next three to four sessions, I'd have to be looking at 88.30 to 80, 87.69 as targets to the downside. It's going to be very one by one. Some of these spectacular stocks are taking in on the chin. There was another one, IA, oops, IACI, 877-927-664. Aha, we've got a caller on the line. We've got John in Foley. Hi, John, how are you? Good morning, Basil. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you quickly on ticker symbol GLDX. It's an ETF. That's the mini. I'm wondering, that, I'm that, wondering that, on the uh, daily chart in the Chapman wave if you've seen, if you've gotten any signals that uh, whether or not the trend, the downtrend has reversed and now is turned up. Okay, well, I lost all my notation on this one. Let me just do it again. Okay, I, actually, it shouldn't be a buy signal. Give me one second. Folks, we're looking at. We're looking at GLDX. It's trading at $9.40. It's down $0.07. Cents, and it's just been. It's been going underneath the 20-period exponential moving average, and the 9-period moving average is the short term in the weekly charts, the shorter term, and it, it barely has been able to close above this. All of a sudden, you've got the stochastic at 9.72, and the MACD is making a higher, a higher low than it did uh, on the previous uh, low of uh, in December of this year. That's one positive. Let me just do this. I'm going to... 
Let me just finish this real quickly. You can see, folks, in the den, this is the way I do the chapter. If I look for the most obvious lowest low bar, and then I merely count each successive peak, expecting that there should be, if it's in a buy mode, at least a peak D, E, or F. And sometimes, and in this case it worked out, I have a rule in the chap wave. It's called, um, I won't go to it now. It's called the smooth peak G. The smooth peak G is when you go to a peak F, six highest peak from the lowest low bar, and then within two bars, preferably without breaking the low bar of F, of the bar that is F, which is at 1219 on the 31st of January, it goes to a leg G. It's almost as if F is continuing. I call that a smooth peak G. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting the down arrow. Why? Because that's the first time that the fast-moving average of the stochastic turned down and then crossed negatively. And now what you've done is then you went to peak A, B minus, failed with the dreaded H pattern. Another one, peak A minus, peak A minus, peak A minus, peak A. Ha-ha! So, now here's the question. And I'm going to do a couple of things, John. I... Do you mind if I take a little time on this? Although Larry's show is coming up, and Larry's is the one that I wanted to spend more on the commodities. Let's start it off now. Do you mind if I want to? I want sure, to do a little right work yeah. because I'm, I want to look at a number of different things within the gold sector. The gold, Philadelphia gold and silver. Ah, you're from Philadelphia, and this is the Philadelphia gold and silver sector index is making somewhat of the same pattern. It gave a fabulous uh, top formation uh, at two. 04.97 back in January with a retest of 204.90. Oh, I wrote that in wrong, incorrectly. So there was a little double top there. It tried again to get there and it failed. So that was the drop bucket or double top formation failure. And it comes all the way down. Now let's see if the same pattern might work out here on the bottom. So I'm going to go to the 120 minute chart. So it goes to peak A, B, C. It's actually C1, C2, and then it pulls back. Okay, so now I know what that's doing. Now you had asked me about the GLDX. So that's the, the oh, this is the Global X Gold Explorers ETF. Now, this one is a little stronger. Now, that's interesting. What I said to subscribers this morning is that some gold stocks are acting way better than gold itself. So I think you're right in looking at this ABC. If you're looking at my chart, what you will see is that there's a 200-period exponential moving average. That's I'm just putting little dots there. That movish line there. It it once before it rallied to it. Oh, twice before and it couldn't hold it. It kept breaking. Well, once again it went there and then it's pulling back. Now I've got a question for you. <clears throat> yes. The question is, I know that you like to. To get into a position, as if it's a starter position, with the concept in mind that although it's a starter position, you will actually feel comfortable in adding as it rises if your technicals are confirming. Is that correct? Precisely right. Okay. Have you any position now in the GLDX? Just bought one uh, an hour ago. Okay. Now, let me do this because I'm going to do something... I wanted to do it. I did it last night. I wanted to do it this morning. I haven't had a chance to do it. I'm going to do something as a relationship of of the XAU, the HUI, the Gold Index, the Spot Gold, and the GLD and the GLDX. I'll do that during the break, and I'll give you my summation when we get back. Be right back, folks. Dow's down 39. It's be Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and 
very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 thousand ounces per year at a cash cost of only four hundred and fifty dollars per ounce the hollister mine in nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only 527 dollars per ounce great basin gold is cash flow positive and trades on the toronto and new york stock exchanges under the symbol gbg Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And we are right now with John in Philadelphia, and we are looking at the GLDX. And I said I will go through different uh, indices during the break, and I'll be able to get a much better picture. Now, this is what I'm looking at, John. I'm going to make a suggestion about this, and it's really a step-by-step -step process. I believe that the gold stocks are ready for a bit of – they've been ready for a bit of a bounce. And, in fact, this has gone from – the GLDX has gone from a low of 866 up to a high yesterday of 970. That actually is a big percentage, what, 12, 13 percent, just in a very quick time. Now it's pulling back, holding very well. I'm going to make the suggestion that – because the weekly chart has got has had so much resistance at the nine period exponential moving average, nine eighty eight is the number, but the fact that the stochastic is still only in the single digits and the MACD is flattening out says to me it could pop up. The monthly chart in all of the indices say be careful because the work on the actual contract, gold contract itself, is not yet completed. But the stocks themselves could rotate through. A very, they've had, some have had a really deep correction. So I will just ask you to do two things. One is, if you can follow the slow stochastic, which is a 73%, if there is a leg up that goes over 
$9.70 in the next two days to start leg B without having gone to nine under 9.30, let's just be safe, 9.27. Mm -hmm. I would look to see the stochastic get to 80%. If it can get and hold and hold at 80%, you've got yourself a nice rally here that could take you to the left side high of $10.25 back on the 3rd of April. That whole area of, of 10 uh, 25 to 1040, I think. It, yeah, 1037, 1040. That's tremendous resistance. So here's my trading plan. You've got yourself one position. The one position I would give it a little bit of. I, I give it a little room because this has just been down, down, down for 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 uh, weeks and weeks. So there should be some kind of a bounce. The bounce is going to be contingent upon, for me, sustainability. If the MACD is good, histogram is good, but the slow stochastic, if it can hold in the 80% to 81% area, especially if it's doing it as it's crossing $9.70, the high of yesterday, I would add another position, treating the second one as a much tighter stop trading position, hopefully keeping the core, and when, when or if it closes on Friday afternoon above 988, that's the number, and the nine period moving average in the weekly chart, that to me would be very important because it says it could still have another week of strength because that's been the characteristic when it's held above the nine EMA. I'd go one step at a time, realizing that I I don't think gold is done with its correction. But if you look at the dollar, and I'm going to go through this in much greater detail in the next hour when I do Larry's show, the dollar is the one that I'm watching real closely. It's having a bounce. I can only call it a bounce because it, too, was in the single-digit percentage of the stochastic and is now at 11%. So I'm going to discuss that relationship. But that's the trading plan that I would have. Looking out three weeks, I would not be surprised to see the GDX and the, the GLD and the GLDX start to pull back and retest the lows. That, that's that's just the way, plan, Basil, makes sense. That, that's the way it stands right now. Now, if there's a really strong move, if the dollar suddenly gives it back and the euro starts to rally, you get back to that relationship, then you should see the, the GLD, let's just use that because that's the, the big daddy here, holding the nine period moving average, I'm sorry, holding the up channel in the weekly chart. Well, if you look at this, there's been no strength at all in the GLD weekly chart. So you're looking at the smaller caps of the gold sector that are having a good bounce. I'm very suspect and I'm actually stepping aside from gold right now. Thanks so much for calling, John. I Thanks, appreciate Basil. it. Appreciate your Folks, time. Basil Chapman, my service is the opening call. Look at the front page of TFN and check it out. It is a comprehensive look at the markets. I'll be back to do Larry's show straight after this. Hold tight. I'll be back at 877-927-6648.